Mr. Stubblefield, you're nodding yes and smiling at me. <laughs> I was just thinking, we went from Danny Staggers giving us a lot of great information to Kevin Knowles, who's always a font of great information. So we're in for it. We have it's a treat today, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always a treat when you're here, Bill. It's always a treat. And that's every day, it right? Is. Except for Thursday. Well, no, no Tuesday, no, no Thursday. Tuesday. Oh, I have Bill on the every other day. Yeah. Is that yeah. because of the breakfast? Yes. Yeah, the breakfast cannot cannot infringe Can upon that breakfast. Tuesday and Thursday is breakfast? No, no, no. Wait, it's a, Rob doesn't want me on Tuesday. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> that's a lot of Bill. <laughs> that's too much Bill, he says. Too much Bill. <laughs> Bill, I would have Bill here every single day. No, no, no. Too much Bill. I would. Too much Bill. I would have Bill here every single day if he would agree to it. No. Hey, our guest is the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles. Mr. Knowles, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Hey, uh, first and foremost, we had uh, Jason Baker on yesterday, city councilman, and he went over some of the construction taking place in the city. Uh, the construction of walking paths, Frog Hollow, was one of the pieces he mentioned. And he also mentioned that there was a part a frog hollow that the county still needs to address and finish specifically. Can you address that? Is, is there talks going on about having that paved? The, well, those talks have been going on for, for quite a while, and, and uh, that's going to happen. There, there's a trail that's going to connect from uh, the frog hollow uh, out there by the before the bridge there across from uh, Towers Restaurant. It's going to go up towards, I believe it's uh, uh, towards the school there in the back uh, of um, – Hack Wilson Way, mm -hmm. and then it's going to go back there and go in the back behind uh, a couple buildings and come out by the jail there and meet up at Route 9. Uh, that is uh, being looked at. That's being designed. Uh, they're working with CEC, who is working with the city, to be able to make that happen. Don't know the time frame on that. Uh, I can't speak for the county on how fast they move, uh, but um, uh, I know that it's in the works. Are you confident that the county will be addressing that, and is it pretty much a done deal that they're going to uh, take care yeah, of that I'm, part I'm, of it? I'm very, very confident that, that that's going to happen, that we're going to have a trail that you can get from here to, to Charlestown, either by walking or by bike. Yeah. And at some point, is there some connection that goes back <clears throat> like in my backyard, yes. um, around Lake Thomas and to um, to War Memorial, if I'm not mistaken, correct? You you are correct. Uh, when we when it's when it's all said and done, and it's being done in phases uh, because of different things that we have and studies that we're doing, we we have a creekside plan that we're working on uh, that is working on those same. Uh, properties that you talked about with the Councilman Baker yesterday, the old mill down there and, and the distillery. And it's going to go through there. It's going to come uh, around Aspen Hall. We've been able to work with Aspen Hall to, to get the rights to that property to go through there, go through Oatsdale, and then uh, come out uh, at, at Lake Thomas. Uh, Kevin, is there a master plan or even a plan of any sort that's available for the citizens to look at to get a better understanding of what we're talking about? I, I don't think at, at this point we have something uh, with a complete plan because it's all under still under um, study and, and, con and construction on the, uh, the engineering side of things. But the plan of the one that's almost done now is, is definitely should be able to be available to the public. Because I've heard a lot of discussion by you, Jason. Dan Duye was very active in this when he was still on the, uh, the county council. Uh, but it's a lot of names here and names there. And I'm having difficulty trying to integrate all the places, all the names. So at some time, I think it'd be very convenient or very handy if we could graphically see what you're talking about. Yeah, any time, Bill, that you want to come, we could. Um, there is, I could show you at the office, at the city office, uh, of the plan on how it's supposed to go. But again, as time changes and and as uh, our negotiations may change with a, a property owner, whatever it might be, that could adjust here and there a little bit. So to put out a a final uh, vision of that would be a, a tough thing to do right now. Yeah, I realize things change, and but I was not asking for this as the final, but in. A lot of things such as this, uh, preliminary, where we are at this point in time and I think it is made available to the public. So. Yeah, and, and you know, you saying that, I could go back to City Hall and see if that's something we can yeah, put on our website. Yeah, yeah. 
I think a lot of people would enjoy that. I, I think they would, yeah, yeah. because, again, uh, you folks do a great job. And Jason yesterday uh, doing the same thing was talking about Lake Thomas. And uh, if, you're in, if you're a neighbor of Maria, you know all about it. But if you're not a neighbor of Maria, you have this kind of vague idea of where it is. So it would be nice to have something that people can look at and identify. Uh, yeah, I get that. And uh, I'll get back to City Hall after this, and we'll see if it's something we can put on our Facebook or and or our website so that individuals can take a look at that. Uh, again, I have to check with our legal aspect of things, but yeah, that's, I don't see a problem with Good. it. You mentioned Lake Thomas. Uh, Councilman Baker also addressed Lake Thomas and some potential future plans for that for the city. Well, I think that before you would see the finish of the, uh, uh, the paths, you're going to see something happening at Lake Thomas. Uh, you know, we're looking to have some kind of... Uh, um, area there where they're going to have picnic tables, maybe some pavilions and a walking path there also. But uh, we are, again, waiting on some uh, engineering studies because of the, uh, the the grounds around it. We have to want to make sure it's safe for everybody to make sure. Some big fish back there. Yeah. Could, could, <laughs> could we look for something like Coney Island back there? No. Why not? Maria would like yeah. that. <laughs> I'm just no, like, we're going to do some cliff diving. Tell, yeah, I was going <laughs> to do some cliff say diving. that might be the mitigating factor for the judge saying maybe it's time to Bill to wants, move. A, yeah, wants Nathan's hot dogs back somewhere there. else on the west end. Yeah, so. uh, Lake Thomas is going to be something that's going to be peaceful and serene uh, to go within the the neighborhood area. So. You're not going to put 350 RV uh, campsites back there. 50 maybe, but 50, not 250. Not 50. Oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> You'll see no RV campsites in the city. No, all right. Just At least on city property. <laughs> now Maria's getting nervous. Yeah, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Could be I hope problem. my husband's listening. A couple of party cabins, maybe? That might be fun. Yeah. yeah. Over, hey, over yeah. On, the, on, on that side where Maria's house is. <laughs> <laughs> no curfew. Yeah. No sound, no say, sound ordinance, nothing. L- liven up that part of yes. the city. It needs to be more It's n- the only place like we're going to allow fireworks in the city? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And if you get too too out of line, there's a I'm judge only right there. When I say that, and, that's right. And I that's can right. see a curfew, but I think the curfew would be at three or three o'clock in the morning. So after everybody else closes down, they can go toward Maria's house. Well, you house. have to make it, you have to make it for them. It's just getting closer. better and better. <laughs> you will just turn her place into a B and B. Yeah, right. there you yeah. go. The there judge will appreciate I'm that. Sure. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, right, let's get off of Maria now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We're, I think we're running. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, it's your but, turn today, Maria. But, but we, uh, it is. We, we it don't. Is. We don't really know if she's hearing anything or not. Or she may have her earphones on. I'm in great shape. This all stems from where Bill gets seated for the big hospice gala. Uh, every year. <laughs> it does. Uh, he, just, he just went back a couple rows. <laughs> you can't go back maybe, any further. Yeah. That's the problem. She has maybe me so outside. far back. Maybe <laughs> outside, Bill. She has me so far you know, back in the digging corner. your hole. You know there. the kids' table at Thanksgiving? Yeah. Bill's at the preschool table. He can't even get to the kids' table. That's how far back he is already. And it's bothering him, Kevin. It's bothering him. He's getting and a TV saying, train. And I, and I keep telling Maria, I'm sorry, Maria. I did not mean to do that. And she just laughs. Remember that <laughs> snarky sort of laugh? Yeah. Oh. Oh, she's getting them good. Yeah, uh, let's <laughs> let's move on. Nikki's going to be coming in. Yeah, that's right. We can we can have her do that. Yeah, that'll be fun too. Nikki Nikki Bigarelli, she's the new CEO of Hospice. She'll that's join right. us at uh, nine thirty. Sheriff Nate Harmon's with us at uh, nine oh five. All right, uh, Kevin, take us through uh, through a couple of the other projects as well that we can expect. And first and foremost, before you do that, though, when when do you think, like in a, a best case scenario, you'd have Lake Thomas the way you kind of want it to be in the future? Well, if I were to, to, to put it out on the table, I think uh, at the end of the summer you'll see some action there, and, and definitely by next spring, for sure, I would say. And Maria would say it's just perfect the way it is. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's pretty evident. I might take care that, of the turkey vultures, too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. We need to get rid Okay, we won't go down the turkey vulture path. Um, but... We're back it's, on Maria. <laughs> it is interesting because people who know it's there obviously know it's there, but there's a lot of um, you know trees in the in the summertime you can't really see, and it's obviously fenced um, around for safety purposes. But there are people <laughs> who do go and you know jump the fence, whatever, and there, as I said. You know, I hope I'm not letting a secret out. There are some big fish in there. So I've heard giant catfish. So I heard. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Loch Ness monster kind of thing. Oh, hey, uh, David Anderson uh, sent me some information on this, and he just posted this too on our comment section. The city's first Arbor Day celebration is Friday at South Middle at nine, and you will be speaking. Yes, this uh, time you know about it, right? As opposed to this, the first pitch. Well, yeah, <laughs> the first pitch. You know what? I'm glad you said that because uh, yes, I did. I found out I was at a meeting with uh, David Anderson the other night, and he passed me a note. And I looked at it, and I said, what is this? And, he, and then he told me. So I learned through David that, that, I, that I would be speaking on Friday. Well, that's nice to have so many schedulers for you. Well, the, here, I was out of town uh, on city business for our last meeting, so Ken Collinson handled the meeting, and some of that stuff was taken care of in that, in that meeting. And, and I was in San Antonio representing uh, the state of West Virginia mayors for uh, the Southern League of Cities. And, and uh, so it's, it's great that we had somebody to be able to uh, step in, and it was also great to be able to represent West Virginia down there. My, very nice. Uh, also, give me a completion date for Frog Hollow Path best scenario. Well, I I think a couple of weeks. I mean, I I can't see two weeks. Maybe you know, um, let's say uh, Memorial Day would be probably a good guess on on my part, or be okay. or before I would hope. And what do you know about the Arbor Day celebration, in the city's first? Anything? Uh, Other know, than you're speaking, you're speaking. <laughs> I, I know. I know. That and I, you like trees. I know. I'm speaking, and and I have to say for for David Anderson and. And his committee that we that we've appointed uh, the shade tree committee for the city have done an awful lot of great work in uh, getting trees planted here in the city of Martinsburg and to beautify it and getting the right trees you know trees that if you go down city blocks you'll see sidewalks being raised we're getting we're, they're, they're getting the kind of trees that the the roots are going straight down they're not floundering out so that we're going to have the same problems fifty years from now as the sidewalks being raised and and then Residents are in charge of their sidewalks, and it becomes a problem and an issue when a city um, plants the tree and, and the tree causes the no. damage. To the many sidewalks. many years ago, um, when I was at the newspaper, I did a column, and I can still remember if if Mark Baldwin is listening, he'll um, maybe chuckle, maybe not, um, about the stinky trees um, because the trees that bloom um, on either side of King Street when they are really in bloom, they're really stinky. Oh, pear trees are uh, famous for they're, that. Oh. They're pear trees. Oh, yes, they're, and, they're terrible. Um, and so I did this little story about how they were so lovely and just a wonderful welcome to the city when you come in in the springtime, but boy, do they smell. And Mark was like, nice. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. Thanks Maria. Now, so, now yeah. I know why everybody was looking at me when I was walking by them <laughs> yeah. last week or yeah. two. <laughs> That was a lot of years ago, Kevin. Now, so. You've had a shade tree committee for several years, have you not? We we have, uh, but I have to say that over the last two, three years, they've been more active than I've ever seen them. Uh, they've been uh, identifying areas. We, we've budgeted a few thousand dollars for them to buy trees. They've identified areas to be able to plant these trees to, to be able to make the, uh, the city more welcoming and, and uh, more green. Interwoven Mills, uh, the uh, development of apartment complexes there. What's the story? Wow. The monument. I'll tell you. That, I'm excited. That is exciting. I, I had an opportunity to tour that with the Senator Mansion a couple of weeks ago, and, and it was one of those where I walked in and I said, wow. You know, you can see the progress. Wow. I mean, if, um, if I get an opportunity, maybe we'll take a little tour up there for you to, to mm -hmm. walk I love through. that. And they... Uh, they have the the uh, framing up of all the all the all the rooms up there, and there, there's. Uh, I, well, I was shocked because there was a couple um, loft apartments they had too, and and uh, they're going to have a couple three bedroom apartments, which I didn't know that there was going to be uh, three bedroom apartments there. So they got studio, one bedroom, and two bedroom and three mm -hmm. bedroom apartments, and the complex is just unbelievable. Kevin, can you re refresh us what's going to be there? How many apartments? What's going to be there for restaurants and the like? Yeah, the the, the plan is to have uh, close to 400 uh, market value apartments, uh, uh, to have about 10,000 square foot of retail, nothing in stone as far as retail. There's going to be a, a community aspect uh, for like a, a – gymnasium for the more workout area they're going to have a pool they're going to have all the nice amenities for for that also and there's also uh, plans to revitalize the front to be some type of a a, a brewery or, or restaurant type uh, place to be 
um, the the chamber of which I'm um, involved as well, the Martinsburg Berkeley County Chamber of Commerce um, does a, and you spoke, um, I think last spring, uh, does a government affairs um, committee. And as chair of that committee, we asked Mr. Dickey um, yes. to come along with you. I'll get you that date so you can put it on your calendar um, to speak to the group about um, progress because um, it's just moving along so quickly. Yeah, and, and you know, I can't say enough for Monument because they've also, they're also going to be doing the infrastructure there in the area for stormwater. Uh, and it's going to affect uh, 61 acres uh, of that area. So you're going to see new sidewalks, new curbs, uh, new uh, streetscape, and it's going to be exciting to see what that happens. They can do it a lot quicker than a government entity like ourselves can do it, and they're going to just go ahead and do that, and then we've worked out some um, uh, rebates with some, some of the, the, the permits or anything, whatever, to, to be able to make that happen. Kevin, and we're talking with uh, Mayor Kevin Knowles from the city of Martinsburg. Have there been any preliminary estimates or studies done on what the economic impact on the city of Martinsburg uh, will be from this development once it's completed, finished, housed, and, and up and running? Uh, good question. It's, there's not one that I know of at this, time, at this time. That doesn't mean there isn't one. Uh, it does mean I'll find out mm -hmm. when, I, when I leave here. I, I think one of the things that I just love is the fact that here's this old building that has so much history, perfection garment, you know, in in Martinsburg, in the city. People who worked there um, spent their whole career there, um, and and you know now taking that existing building and making it into something else, much like the, you know, the, the Dunn Dun building, building the, that Crawford building, and like, yeah. the, um, you know, the judicial center. I mean, it's just, it, you know, it just speaks so much to the history of this city. It, it's funny you say that because I was in San Antonio and I went to visit a place called the Pearl. That's right off the river walk. And the Pearl was an old um, uh, distillery. And it was around before Prohibition and all that. And, and they revitalized. Now, this place, this is a massive place here that they revitalized there. But to take a look at what they did there and to see what Monument can do up at, uh, up at the mill there uh, at a smaller scale, it's just my, my eyes just lit up. It's just uh, amazing uh, what can be t done to an old building like that and the surrounding area. With the city planning, city city growth, uh, what about a parking garage? That's been discussed in years past. Has it still been discussed at all, Kevin? Yeah, I discuss it all the time. I've discussed it since 2012, yeah. but I, I haven't had, a, a, at this point, anything moving forward with that. I think I think it's a discussion that's going to continue to happen every year uh, because you, as you do see the growth, and keep in mind that when you see bigger events downtown, as we've been seeing, and, and then – you know, the, the, the uh, coming online of possibly stuff at the Roundhouse, you know, we took a look at, we did 5,000 people down there for the, the, the uh, home show, and, you know, the parking there, that would have been huge to have a, a nice uh, parking garage somewhere down there so that they could walk over a bridge instead of cluttering up the, the grounds and, and the other areas. Well, let's talk about the Roundhouse, if we could. And uh, I know the city doesn't control the Roundhouse, the, I guess the Roundhouse Committee controls the Roundhouse, or if I have the words correct on that. But when I when I went to the home show this year, the grounds looked fairly similar to the grounds the way they looked last year. Now, I know some stuff is going to start to happen there soon, but this seems like it's a pretty massive project in terms of what I think it would take and the amount of money it would take to get that place looking like what projections show it should look like going forward. What needs to happen? What kind of cooperation needs to happen, uh, Kevin, to get that moving in the right direction uh, quickly or, or more speedily? Well, I, first of all, um, up until last year, the county were the only ones that were, I believe, that could appoint anybody to the uh, Roundhouse Authority. I had conversations with the county and so that the city could have more involvement in, in, in what's being done down there with the funding aspect of things. And, and now we have three appointments from, to the Roundhouse to, to that board. I think more involvement on, 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 on either a county or a city entity to either take it over and own it and, and, and be able to maintain it 
uh, I think that's something that that should be looked at, should be talked about. I think all three entities should get together, county, roundhouse, and city, to have a conversation on what what can we do to move this thing forward. If it's a matter of someone, one of the entities taking it over financially and dissolving the the roundhouse authority, that is a that is a legislative, as much as, as I understand, it, a very arduous le- legislative um, effort to be able to do that. So. Um, Rob's asked a, uh, a key question, though. Uh, who owns the roundhouse? I don't think it's a county. I think they own the property. The county owns the property. I, believe they own the I property. don't think so. You may well be right. Yeah, well, you but know, they, there, there's the. I guess that's the thing. Nobody knows. That's nobody right. knows. That's we a need, good point. We need yeah. to all get together. And, I mean, I, I have to say, for the city of Martinsburg, it is vital. It is vital that something be done on a quicker. Uh, fashion than we've seen over the years to bring that online because it is vital to what the city of Martinsburg has been trying to do. If the, if you take a look, the city of Martinsburg the last couple of years has been moving forward real quick, real fast. And and I tell people, keep your eyes and ears open. Things are happening. And, and, and I think you're going to see some more uh, more in-depth talks about what's going to happen down at that round. It's cause it, ha- it has to happen, whether whether it's the city taking it over, whether it's the county. Somebody has to take ownership where there is funding available and the ability to get these types of grants to be able to make this. The biggest deterrent is there's a lot of historical things that you can't do to bring that online. So it, there, there has to be a... a there has to be some kind of medium ground that we all can get on to make sure that this thing is brought up and brought up in a lot quicker fashion. I did not attend the home show this year, but did come last year when it was freezing and snowing, and I think we talked a little bit about that. But actually took a tour. Um, my daughter is getting married next year, and we were looking at that as a possible venue. And Matthew Umstead took us on the tour and showed us the buildings and um, and so on and so forth. And I mean, it is lovely. Martinsburg High School just had its prom there. Mm -hmm. Um, So it is a usable facility, especially now with the bathrooms. Um, But, you know, there's still a lot, clearly a lot of work to be done. Um, You know, handicap accessibility, all those things that you mentioned, the historical aspect. Um, Boy. Boy, and I remember when the first millions came through, a la Senator Byrd, um, and people said it's going to be nothing but a boondoggle, and I stood on that. Uh, well, the Senator Byrd's money, and mm-hmm. it was a uh, half a million or more, I think, was used for infrastructural necessity, right? for structural mm-hmm. needs. But I, uh, when I was on the county commission, county council, uh, I don't think we ever took ownership. Uh, we we appointed members to the Roundhouse Authority, but you're exactly right, Kevin. Someone needs to sort out who is a principal driver. Uh, the Roundhouse Authority are appointees, and so there is a limit of how much authority they have, how much ability they have to make things happen. It's got to reside in either the county or the city one to take it to the next step that Rob is, is proposing. Yeah, I, and, I agree. Yeah, and if it is that big... Uh, that important of a um, of a facility for Martinsburg, you need an executive director. I mean, you know, somebody who. Are you applying? No, no. Sounded like she sounded was applying. Like, sounded like that. That was a push across the table. No, uh, no, no, no. Kevin, she's <laughs> going to be too busy with Lake Thomas. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I got to sell popcorn and do. We got to turn Lake Thomas into Lake Havasu. Like yeah. MTV Spring Break now at Lake Thomas. Candy apples. It's, I think it's going to be huge. Maria, that's a great idea. You're okay, definitely great. in charge of that. Thank you. Very kind of you to suggest that people stay at your property while they're vacationing at Lake Thomas. Okay. Just put a bench at the property line. <laughs> uh, Kevin, about a minute left. Anything you want to make sure that the audience knows about City of Martinsburg? Well, you, you're, you're going to see finishing up here, and I know people are asking about the, the underpass. There was some issues that we had to go through with some changing of, of some of the businesses down there. So that underpass is going to be getting done real soon, real fast. And, and then eventually you're going to start seeing some, some uh, artwork or some murals on the side walls going up. Uh, through there and 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 it's my goal to to put more murals here in the in the city of Martinsburg as I sweep, as we see them elsewhere and how it brings life back to to the down, down, downtown corridor and other areas within the city 
Jim Klein is just volunteered with the executive director of the Roundhouse. So you're off and running, Kevin. This has been very productive this morning. There you go. There you go. You know, you know what? We do well with Jim Klein. Yeah. I think it's always amazing how many people are willing to pay for a job they presume. I mean, willing to apply for a job they presume is going to pay a lot of money. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, it's never going to materialize. <laughs> and a lot of work. A lot of work. Let me Lots just say, work. when you're first at something, it's a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> first yeah. one through. Hey, Kevin, thanks so much for well, coming thank in. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles.